when it comes down to M and A, you start dealing with a slightly different beast. Yes. And the motivations you end up seeing, and it's not just in terms of the the, the acquirer. Um, it's the other associated individuals around exactly. the whole Exactly, it's their well. ecosystem as well. Yes. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of players in your company and other companies as well. Yeah. And you start seeing motivations and loyalties and such like change. Yeah. And that was that was a harsh experience, I have to say, a harsh experience. But yeah. Um, yeah. some advice, um, get to know who's acquiring you. Uh, exactly. As well, stick to your guns. Um, yep. In terms of a whole bunch of things, I'm so glad that it came down to, to looking at the um, sale and purchase agreement, the SPA, yeah. that um, stuck to to the guns and a whole bunch of things. That was really quite important. That's good to have those protections in place. Exactly. And at the end of the day, it's a transaction. Yes. And um, the, the buyer doesn't really give a hoot about you as an individual. And quite often, they're also, also buying from other businesses, et cetera. It's very much a transaction thing. Yeah. They don't care too much. But yeah. one thing I will say is that be prepared for for the worst. You know, we had an 11th hour situation where the acquirer in this case walked away. Yeah. And I have my my thoughts about that whole situation and yeah. various conversations I had with various people back up those those thoughts. And that's that's fine. But when you have someone who's been talking to the last 10, 11 months, yeah. who has had full visibility of all the figures, and then takes the opportunity to say, actually, no, we don't like the latest set of figures, which are the same as everything else you've actually seen over, yeah. over the last uh, wee while. You go, hold on, you're just playing a game here. And um, quite honestly, it did seem a little bit like someone was playing a game. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the decision's left with you as the, the seller, whether you want to continue to sell or not. We came back to the table. This sounds all very much soprano-ish, but in any case, um, we came back to the... Uh, history repeats itself. Wonder exactly. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I came back to the table. Um, got, you're got you're really nightmares for me. I've, I've been doing this for three and a half years. I spent 10 years between Iris Wireless and then restructuring Tintac. And we spent three and a half years. You should go listen to podcast number nine. I talk about how we had a deal closed with Soprano. And yeah. then the private equity group, Scipio Partners, blew that deal. Then we had a deal with Evolving System. And that deal was blown again because Scipio partner didn't want to take stock. It was a public roller. Then we had a deal with Cinch and we chose, well, Scipio partners and Thorsten Trapp and Tintech chose to go the public route. Then the public company we were going to do a deal with went and got an offer to buy themselves, got themselves bought. So we lost out on the Cinch deal. Then we spent 14 months with GMS trying to get a deal done. And it was the most painful experience ever. And um, so my 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 take cash, all cash up front, and um, it, it's a nightmare. We, so we spent three and a half years. So I got into yeah. messaging by accident. So this is great because we're going to start telling this Tintech story now, actually, because it's just coming about. And it's going to be a fascinating story, especially for somebody like you that has been through it, understands it. So watch the space with us because we did a CPAS AI Truth and Telecoms episode but uh, the timing now to tell the story of, look, three and a half years, term sheets mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, you're talking about three and a half years of pain. And now we have a situation where everybody hates each other. Yeah. And uh, yeah. everybody wants to kill each other. Um, but uh, so you brought up some nightmares for me, but boy, fascinating. And yeah, Link yeah, Mobility. Yeah. So Link Mobility, I didn't know too much about them. I knew about the Soprano deal, but I called them on the market. And I called them at eight bucks doubling and yeah. they've doubled. So I've called the market cold here the last few months. Um, they seem to have cleaned their act up. They seem to be going in the right direction. Who knows? Maybe they'll come yeah. back again in a year or two and buy you again. <laughs> 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 history. You said it. History always repeats itself, right? So did you not listen to the previous bit there? You've got to watch who. who... <laughs> Due diligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Granted, there's oh. always a new CEO. There's always new leadership. Oh yeah, no, I was just going to say that as well. There's there's new faces, you know. The yeah. the the it's obviously kind of the, the CFO stepped into the CEO role now, and that's that's now permanent. And he's, um, I would say he's he's a good guy. He's a good guy, and I heard good things about. But what's him. your opinion of a CEO stepping into a CEO role? A CFO yeah, stepping into a CEO? Oh, absolutely no way. I I, I I I do not understand that. I do not understand that. <laughs> obviously, there's a lot of market appeasement going on here. But yes, it, yeah, it, it's very simple. It's a fire sale. 